Hello, thank you for joining. My name is Jamie Natupski, Licensed Professional Counselor with the Behavioral Health Department at City of Hope Chicago. Today we'll be covering topic four, which is survivor's guilt. Let's get started. Survivor's guilt, key takeaways. Survivor's guilt occurs when someone feels guilty for living through an experience when others do not. It often happens when someone survives widespread illness, natural disasters, or when they survive a loved one, especially a child. If survivor's guilt is affecting your ability to live your life, consider talking to a therapist or joining a survivor's group for additional support. Survivor's guilt, why does that happen? While survivor's guilt is common, we don't fully understand all the reasons why it happens. Some people feel guilty because they get to live their life when someone they care about does not. Others worry that they didn't do enough to prevent the loss of life. Survivor's guilt may also give people a false sense of control over a situation where they had little control. More often than not, there wasn't anything that they could have done to change the outcome. Examples of people who may experience survivor's guilt. Someone who survives their grandchildren, children or spouse. Someone who has lived through a war or type of conflict. Someone who has a negative self-concept, questioning why they deserve to live. Surviving a situation in which chances of survival are small, such as a natural disaster, someone who was faced with impossible choices, such as escaping in a burning building while others were still inside, believing that they had an equal chance of survival with those who died. In this case, survival can feel random or unearned. Signs and symptoms of survivor's guilt. According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, survivor's guilt is one of the possible symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD. You do not have to be diagnosed with PTSD to experience survivor's guilt, but if you or your loved one is experiencing any of the following, it may be time to consider getting outside support. These symptoms and signs include flashbacks, trouble sleeping, or having vivid dreams, irritability and agitation, intrusive thoughts, decline in mood, loss of interest in favorite activities, anger outbursts, feelings of helplessness and hopelessness, obsessively thinking about the event, a sense of isolation and detachment, physical changes such as a loss of appetite, headaches, heart palpitations, or digestive problems. In very rare cases, the mood brought by survivor's guilt can cause suicidal thoughts. If you or someone you care about has thoughts of suicide, contact the free confidential national suicide hotline by dialing 988 from any phone. How to cope with survivor's guilt. If you or someone you care about is struggling with survivor's guilt, you may not know what to do. There isn't a lot of research out there for what's best for a survivor's guilt in particular, but while there isn't a quick fix to these uncomfortable feelings, there are some things you can do to help yourself feel better. Name your feelings. Sometimes it can be confusing to experience grief and guilt all at once. Take some time for yourself to explore and name what you're feeling. Write your feelings down in a journal if it is helpful and remember that all emotions are okay and valid, even the uncomfortable ones. Have patience with yourself. Healing is a marathon, not a sprint. One day you find yourself laughing about funny memories, but then crying uncontrollably the next. Have patience with yourself and try to embrace the ups and downs as they come. Know that while your pain may never fully go away, you will feel better in time. Get support. Grief and guilt can lead to feelings of isolation. So if you are struggling with survivor's guilt, talk about what you're experiencing with someone that you trust. You can speak to a friend, a loved one, a therapist, or even a support group who understands what you're going through. 
giving back. While you might not be ready to get involved right away, giving back can help you heal from survivor's guilt. For example, if you are a cancer survivor, trying to get involved with an organization that supports cancer patients when it feels right. How do I help the loved one manage their survivor's guilt? First and foremost, listen. Provide an accepting, non-judgmental space for your loved one to express themselves, no matter what they are feeling. Be patient and give your loved one time to grieve. It may be tempting to get them to try to snap out of it or get back to activities that they used to enjoy, but know that this will take a while and take time. Offer to help in small ways. Often, simple acts like preparing a meal or running an errand can feel impossible when someone is in the throes of survivor's guilt. Do what you can do to take something off their to-do list. Reflect and validate their feelings, even if they don't make sense to you. You can acknowledge what your loved one is going through without ever experiencing something similar yourself. Be available and check in consistently. Even if your loved one doesn't want to talk or spend time with you, it will help them to know that someone is thinking of them. Research existing resources in your community or online. Together with your loved one, look into support groups or mental health professionals who might be able to offer their support. Take care of yourself and be mindful of caregiving fatigue. Be sure to engage in self-care, set boundaries with your loved one, and take breaks when you need to. Mental health resources for people living with survivor's guilt. Sometimes a person might need some outside help to process their survivor's guilt. When this happens, consider speaking to a mental health professional who specializes in treating bereavement and trauma-related concerns, such as PTSD. To find a therapist, start by asking for a referral from a friend or family member that you trust, or ask your primary care physician if they have recommendations. You can also search for a therapist online using the databases, such as Psychology Today, Good Therapy, Therapy Den, Inclusive Therapists, Open Path Psychology Collective. In addition, survivor groups can offer validation and support from people who have experienced what you have gone through. Often, these groups are held in places like hospitals, treatment centers, churches, and even online. Many people struggle with survivor's guilt after a loss or a traumatic event. So if this happens to you, know that you are not alone. Give yourself some time to process your feelings and grieve your loss. If your survivor's guilt is keeping you from doing things that you enjoy, otherwise negatively affecting your daily life, it may be time to get some outside help. Talk to a therapist who specializes in grief and trauma or attend a survivor's support group. This information was provided to you by City of Hope Chicago and GoodRx Health. This concludes Topic 4. Thanks for listening.